And let's see here. Recording. Come on, baby. Okay, it looks like we're recording. Welcome, everybody, to our webinar today. Myself and Penny Pearl are on the line, and this is our webinar, kind of the second uh, second session where we're going to talk additional information about the next level of lead generation on LinkedIn. So if you recall, three weeks ago, we did a webinar where it was literally ended up extending out to about three hours. And on that webinar, we broke down exactly all the stuff that you need to do to create a perfect client profile for LinkedIn. Because if you understand lead generation, lead generation, you can, you can go to market with the best message on the planet, but go after the wrong lead and you're not going to have any success at all. Or you can go to your perfect client with the absolute wrong message and not have any success. It's only when you go to market for your perfect client, you've identified who your perfect client is, and you go to market with the perfect message, only then can you have success. And so for those of you that were on that live webinar, we broke it down step by step. There was nothing else that you needed to create a fire-breathing profile on LinkedIn, to get all your keywords in there, to where you attract your perfect client. If you recall, I broke down step by step exactly how you identify who your perfect client is, how you structure your profile to attract your perfect client, and then Penny broke it down step by step, all the different ways to you can promote out your profile to your perfect client on LinkedIn. And I got to tell you, some of you, and I've gotten some emails, some of you have taken that content and have taken action on it and have seen a dramatic increase in your perfect client on LinkedIn. It's one of the most powerful lead generating systems in existence today. Today, we're going to go into even more information about groups. We're going to go into more information about how the different little back-end nuances to LinkedIn, all the little tips and tricks and stuff that we didn't have time to go into. And so you, with this combined with that previous webinar, you're going to be armed and dangerous as it relates to LinkedIn. Now, here's an advanced idea for some of you, and that is this. All of us have great clients. Most of our clients are business owners. They would like to learn how to generate more leads on LinkedIn themselves. And so the magic move for you would be to teach this to your client. I shared a, in fact, I'm going to share a strategy that I learned from my buddy Jim Canaris back in 2009 that he has used on me every single month since then and he always walks away with five to seven referrals every single month that we meet. I'm gonna share exactly how you go about doing that but it requires you to have your act together on LinkedIn. And so the first thing I wanna talk about today is I wanna talk about intention. And so let me double check something here real quick, make sure that uh, uh, everybody is getting dialed in here. Okay. And then everything, okay, good, good. Um, all right. And so let's hop right on into it. So let's first address this right here. What is your intention for being on this webinar today. I'll tell you my intention. My intention is to give you every single thing that you need to be successful with LinkedIn. My intention today is to give you every single thing that you need 
to be successful in generating as many leads as you want. I'm always amazed at how many business owners come to me and they always tell me, they say, hey, you know what, my, what, I go, what's your biggest challenge? And they always tell me, say, they say, hey, you know what, um, my biggest challenge is lead generation. And my response to them is, okay, what are your lead generation systems? And invariably, they don't have any systems. And so my intention today, and I know it's Penny Pearl's intention today, is to give you everything that you need to be successful with generating leads. What we need from you is we need you to play full out. So if you can agree to play full out today, turn off your cell phone, not be distracted, you're going to have success. And so let's talk about what you have to do to be successful. Now, I would imagine we all are out there on the web, we're on social media, we're generating leads at networking events, we're, you know, doing uh, email marketing. And one of the things I've learned is in today's market, you've got to do something different than everybody else that's out there. Now, unfortunately, we're on a webinar, so I can't, you know, really have other people raise their hands, but if I was to have you raise your hand, let me ask you this. Are you able to be picked out of a crowd of your competitors? In other words, if we were in a concert venue and let's just say it's a concert venue where you had 15,000 people. And the band has the house lights come up and they're looking out amongst the audience of 10,000 people. Everybody looks the same from that standpoint. I, I have had the privilege at one point to speak in front of 10,000 people. And so I know what I'm talking about. When you look out amongst a crowd that massive, it's very hard to find anybody that you know, because everybody looks the same except for the few select people that have gone the extra mile to stand out. And in today's market, you're gonna to have to stand out or you're not going to succeed. And so let me ask you this, would you be willing to do whatever it takes to succeed in your market? To the point where if I said to you, hey, you know what? This right here is what you have to do in order to succeed. So if I said to you, hey, this is what you have to do in order to succeed, would you do it? Would you hop on a toy donkey with fire coming out of his butt, dressed in a, in a costume with a mask? If I told you that's what you had to do to succeed, would you do it? And here's the point. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, hey, John, I want to build my business. I want to build my business. I want to succeed. I want to succeed. I want to do this. I want to do this. And when it comes down to doing what it takes to make it happen, they start second guessing their commitment. Don't let that be you. You want to do whatever it takes to succeed. And we're going to give you all the stuff that you need today to be successful at generating as many leads as you want. Now, for some of you, you weren't on the previous webinar, or maybe you've never heard myself or Penny speak before. Let me share a little bit about my background real quick, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. So I was born at a very early age, a little small town called Dallas, Texas. Moved to East Oakland, of all places, in the early 80s, and found myself at age 17 and a half in April of 1987, living in an abandoned trailer behind this house. I was homeless. Now, can you get much lower than homeless? 
And most of the people, whenever I'm speaking in front of the room and I ask that question, they say, well, no. And I go, yeah, you can. You can be six feet under. And one of the things I've discovered many times in my own life personally, and I've helped a lot of other people through it, as long as you're alive and breathing, you have the ability to change your circumstance. Some of you listening to this webinar are struggling right now. You may be one month away from bankruptcy. You may be going through the most difficult financial time of your entire life. Or maybe there's a relationship issue. Maybe there's something else that's causing pressure and you're going through a very tough time right now. And I've got good news for you. Today literally is the first day of the rest of your life. How do I know this? Because I was homeless in April of 1987 behind this house. And then on September 24th, 2010, the Sacramento Business Journal did a center page article on me and my company because I had grown a company from zero to a million dollars in three years during the housing crisis. So when Lehman Brothers collapsed in 2008, in September 2008, 2008 happened to be the, one, the year that we broke a million bucks. And then we did it again the next year. And we made this list two years in a row, the fastest growing companies list, which is considered to be the top 100 fastest growing companies in Sacramento. And the reason they did this article is they said, we can't find 100 companies this year. This was 2009's results. The economy was that bad. They were only able to find 75 companies. And they point blank asked me, why are you able to do this when other companies are going out of business and filing bankruptcy? And my answer was very simple. I hired Dave Vanny in 1996 and worked with him until 2006. Then I hired Mike Sastry in December 2005. And I asked him, I said, hey, I want to build this business and I will do whatever you tell me to do. I hired the right mentor. Here's a picture of Dave Vanny right here. And Dave taught me how to sell. Dave taught me that, you know what, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter the fact that your mom was an alcoholic or your dad was abusive or you were on drugs or you dropped out of high school or you were homeless at one time and you've never really had any model of success in your life. I don't give a rip about any of that, John. It only matters where you're going. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to read some different books. I want you to listen to some different audios. And I want you to start hanging out with some different people and things will change for you. And you know what? He was right. And I'm here to tell you all you got to do is change the books you read, the audios that you listen to, and the people you associate with. And you can change your, in any circumstance. Now, it also helped to have this beautiful woman right here, my wife, Shin Mei, to we've been married for 19 years now, to be behind me. But I'm going to tell you just for, straight out from the bottom of my heart, you can do and change whatever circumstance you're in. It's all about mindset. And with Mike's help, with Dave's help, I was able to build an international coaching and consulting business called John Pyron Coaching. And the main thing I focus on is eliminating the frustrations of owning the business. A lot of people are building businesses right now that have never done it. And nothing's more enjoyable for me to wake up every single morning and help somebody build their business. And you're going to do that. The number one takeaway I have for you today is I want you to go find a mentor. Whether it's me, whether it's Penny Pearl, whether it's somebody else, doesn't really matter. It's got to be somebody that you respect, somebody that you're willing to hold yourself accountable to, somebody that you're willing to plug into. And just do the work. That's what Mike was for me. He helped me do the things I did not want to do. And as a result, I was able to help and change a lot of people's lives. And you know what? You have the same ability. And so enough about me. Let's talk about you now. So there's three ways to increase your results. Doesn't matter whether it's in sales, doesn't matter if it's in your business, doesn't matter if it's in your marriage, your finances, your personal life, uh, your health, your fitness, 
any area of your life, there's basically three ways to increase the results and get more out of it, and that is, number one, the inner game. It's our mindset. It's how we view it. And today we're talking about LinkedIn lead generation. And there's an inner game to lead generation. What is your mindset around lead generation? Do you look at it as leads are scarce? That, you know, I just struggle with leads? Because if you continue to struggle with leads and continue to feed that information into your mind, guess what? You're always going to be operating from a place of scarcity. And the information we're going to share with you today is going to help you not do that anymore. And so it does start with, with mindset, and we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. The second thing is the outer game. And this is where you have systems in place that produce leads. And so once you have the systems in place, they will produce a result. Next is taking action. And one of the things about taking action that I want to talk about today is the fact that, you know what? You can have the best inner game on the planet, the best mindset. You can have the best outer game. But if you can't get yourself to take action, nothing else is going to work. And so let's talk about that real quick. And let's start off by talking about the inner game. And hold on just a second. I got to check on one thing here. Okay. All right. Let's come back. All right. So let's talk about the inner game. And we can't talk about the inner game without talking about mindset. And one of the things about mindset is that there's always room to grow. Now, let me ask you a question, and you don't have, you can, you know, send me an email or whatever, but let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that you have potential inside of you to perform at a higher level than the level that you're currently performing at? And if you're like most people that I ask the question to, they all raise their hand. And I agree. And one of the greatest stories, one of the greatest examples of mindset is about the great Michael Jordan. And one of the things that made Michael Jordan so great wasn't the fact that he was born an exceptionally talented athlete, which is true. I mean, in order to even play in the NBA, you have to be great. But what made Michael Jordan so great was his constant desire to always want to get better. And one of the true stories about Michael Jordan was back when they had the Dream Team. When it was Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. And they're over in Barcelona, and every single game they play, they're tearing it up. I mean, they are beating people by 50, 60 points. I mean, they are annihilating the competition. And one evening, Right before they're set to play Spain, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson wanted to go out on the town, and they were looking for Michael Jordan. They couldn't find him. And they finally, after searching high and low, they found him in the gym shooting hoops. And they're like, what, what, what the heck are you doing, man? We're going to kill Spain tomorrow. We're going to kill these guys. Why are you in here? practicing your game. You're the best in the world. And his response is a lesson for all of us. He looked him right in the eye and he said, you know what? I'm not competing against them. I'm not competing against you or anybody else in the NBA. I am competing against myself. And that's why I'm in here shooting hoops. So I can get better because that's all that matters. Well, that's Michael Jordan. How about you and I? What is one thing that you would love to get better at? 
What is your mindset around lead generation? Have you come to the table all this, all these years going, you know, I just don't have enough leads. If I can just get more leads, if I can just get more leads, if I can just get more leads. Well, how about let's switch that and start telling yourself, you know what? I attract leads. I attract my perfect client. I attract more leads than I can handle. And start telling yourself that information and thereby changing your mindset around lead generation. I'll share with you a, a quick story. It's a client of mine. Her name is Denise Ponier. She owns a company called River Coyote Design in Camino, California, which is near Placerville, California. I started working with Denise in December of 2014. She had been in business for 15 years had helped over 3,000 clients in that 15 years, and they all loved her. But they were all, in her opinion, micro clients. They, they were only averaging about $2,500 per project. And she wanted to get into higher priced projects. But the big problem was, is she didn't know how to create leads from scratch. All of her leads came from referrals and networking, and that was not being consistent enough for her, and she could not predict her results. Now, let me ask the question, how many of you have that kind of business where you're very good at what you do, you're very successful at what you do, you do a great job, and everybody loves you, and you have this massive client base, but yet you struggle with generating leads by yourself? Well, there, that's where Denise was. And so I taught her how to generate leads. I taught her the different systems that I'm going to teach you here today. I helped her overcome her resistance that she had to sales. And I'll never forget, it was March 25th. At 1 o'clock in the afternoon, It was I remember it because it was my son. It's my older son's birthday. And she sends me this text, and it basically says, we signed the deal. And basically, she had signed the largest deal in her company's history. It was a $16,000 project. And then she wrote me this email the next week, and she said, you know what? After 15 years of small sales for small projects, it was a big step for me and my team to work with you. And then down below, she says, you know what? As a result, we signed the biggest contract in my company's history. And so if you're looking for a really good graphic designer, web designer, reach out to Denise. She'll tell you the story. She's a phenomenal gal. And so that's the inner game. Now let's talk about the outer game. And we can't talk about the outer game without talking about baseline strategy. It's one of my favorite strategies for the outer game, for systems, because you can apply it to any area of life, but when you apply it to business, you can double, triple, quadruple your results in a very short period of time. So everybody on the live webinar or listening to the recording, we all have a baseline in terms of the results that we produce on a monthly basis. So let's say last month you produced $5,000 in revenue. Your baseline would be $5,000. Your baseline is also every single thing that you did to earn the $5,000. The leads that you generated, the phone calls that you made, the appointments that you ran, the proposals that you presented, it is everything. The strategy is this, every single month sit down and do a baseline on what you did that month to achieve the number that you hit. And then what you're gonna do the following month is you're gonna do exactly what you did the previous month because it's gonna produce a positive result, a very predictable result. And then what I want you to do is I want you to, through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through mentoring, through you know uh, joining a mastermind group, from strategizing with other people, I want you to come up with at least one 
or two new things that you can add to your baseline. And by doing that consistently over time, you're going to produce an increase in result. And you'll eliminate the stock market type result that you're currently getting. You'll have a consistent increase in your sales results. I know this because Clark Broom taught me this back in 1992 and I built six different companies, three of them into the millions of dollars, two of them into the six figures, one of them just failed miserably because I was the jerk in the whole thing. But this system works and implement this on a regular basis. Now let me give you something that you can add to your baseline. How many of you have a referral system? Now here's how you know if you have a referral system. You know who the referrals are coming from, you know when they're coming to you, you know how they're coming to you, and you know it every single month. And if you don't have that kind of system in place, you will after today's webinar. So how many of us have wow clients? You know what I'm talking about. That type of client where it's just wow, man. I mean, I enjoy you. You enjoy me. I love you. You love me. It's just a great working relationship. Let me give you a litmus test. Here's a way that you can tell if you're dealing with a wow client. So a wow client, when they call, which one of these buttons do you press? Do you decline the call? Or do you accept the call? Do you look like this guy? Or do you look like this lady? Which one are you? And I would venture to say most people that I've taken on as clients, most people that I run across, they have a mixture of both. Most of them are clients that they, they don't have a wow experience with. And one of the things that I want to share with you today is, okay, how do you create your perfect client? And on that webinar that Penny and I did three weeks ago, we went into very deep detail on how to find out who your perfect client is. But I'll give you kind of the highlights. Number one is you want to sit down and go back through the clients that you've had over this last year or two years or five years and just simply make a list of those clients that you really, really loved. They loved you. Number two is you want to describe in complete detail who they are. Number three is you want to identify, okay, what made the experience a wow experience? And once you've taken those three steps, you're going to put all those papers on the wall because you want to do this on a separate sheet of paper. And then you're going to whip out your highlighter and you're going to highlight all the key traits that they all have. You're going to identify the common traits that they have. And then you're going to take all of that information and you're going to write out, okay, here's who our perfect client is. Now, can we stop there? No, we can't. Because that is our opinion of what made it a wow experience. And one of the things that my mentor Steve Nopleton has taught me is, you know what, in order to have successful marketing, it is not about what you think about you and your business and your product or service. It's about what the market and what our client thinks about our product, service, or offering. 
So how do we find out what our perfect client considers to be a wow experience? We ask them, we simply ask them, and we do that with a survey. And so you want to come up with a survey that asks open-ended questions where you can ask them, okay, what made the experience of working with me great? And if you go back uh, a couple weeks ago and you listen to that webinar that we did, we gave you step-by-step. Step. Here's how you do a survey. Here's all the questions that you should use. Here's a whole laundry list of sample questions. And you can take that and implement that as a survey. You don't want to call it a survey. Now, some of you have done this exercise. I know because you've contacted me. And you're getting some great response. So... The rest of you that haven't done it, take this action step. Now, once you've done that, you've identified your perfect client. You know exactly what the keywords are. You've gotten your surveys back, and they've given you the keywords. Now, you can take Penny Pearl's information. You can customize your LinkedIn profile to reflect what your perfect client is and reflect what you do for your perfect clients. And then you can implement a LinkedIn referral system. And so this is one of my new favorite referral systems, and I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't because I learned this from my buddy named Jim Canaris. It's one of the top financial planners in Northwestern Mutual in the, in the country. And Jim has basically been doing this system to me since 2009, and I never caught on to it. And since then, I've been able to take it and create an actual system out of it where anytime I meet with you, whether it be on the phone or in person, I connect with you on LinkedIn first. So the first step in this system is to connect with your perfect client on LinkedIn. The second step is to go down to their connections list, which is basically their Rolodex, and you're gonna type in the key words that you got from your survey and your perfect client exercise, and then lo and behold, up will come all the people that they are connected to that fit your perfect client profile. And the benefit is, is your perfect client is directly connected to those other people. And you can simply offer a referral incentive for them to introduce you to them. And it could be a, a, several different things. I mean, if you're in financial services or any type of insurance, you got to be careful because there's regulations associated with this. But you can simply say, hey, you know what? Go to my LinkedIn profile and do the same and I'll introduce you and you introduce me. Or you can say, hey, if you're willing to do this, I'll give you $50 per appointment that's set. I'll give you a Starbucks gift card. I'll donate to your favorite charity. I mean, you name the incentive. And you'll be amazed at how many people will gladly help you out. And then the key is you just do this every single time you have an appointment with somebody, even if you've done it with them already. And that's how you turn it into a system. And so I'm getting ready to turn this over to Penny Pearl. And the reason I want to turn it over to Penny is because how many of you, if I go to your LinkedIn profile, it looks kind of like this. It's like you inviting me over to your house for a barbecue and I show up and this is what it looks like. You've got the foundation poured. You've got a couple of pillars there. There's no walls. I don't even know where the rest. Oh, wait. The restroom is, is out there at the outhouse in the back there. How many of you, your LinkedIn profile looks like this? And you wonder why you're not getting any result. Well, this is where you really want to whip out your notepad because there's nobody better that I know that can help you create a beautiful house like this on LinkedIn other than this lady right here. 
So Penny Pearl is the founder of Veritable Coaching. She is a LinkedIn expert. People from all over the country, specifically, more importantly, in the Bay Area, hire her all the time to help them with their LinkedIn strategy. And she's going to share with us some of the best tips. I mean, I'm going to whip out my notepad here in a minute because I'm going to take lots of notes because I know she's going to bring it today. Now, before I turn it over to Penny, I want to I basically let you know, okay, at the end of our time today, I'm going to be offering an incentive. Basically, it's an incentive to get this webinar right here. This is a webinar. It's called Secrets Revealed, Surefire Ways to Find Your Perfect Client that Penny and I did three weeks ago. Lots of people bought it. Lots of people showed up. Lots of people have used the content to change their life. And we're going to offer it today. Instead of 99 bucks that we normally charge, we're going to give it away for 49 bucks today. And we're going to give the first 10 people to sign up on this, whether it's, and this is going to be on the honor system, okay? So if you are watching this for the first time and you sign up, we, we, will, we, will, we will take it on the honor system, okay? But the first 10 people that sign up for this is going to get a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with myself or Penny. So here's what you're going to get. How to identify your perfect client, we go into complete detail about that. How to design your brand message to attract your perfect client. How to break through limiting mindsets about lead generation. We're going to go into a lot of detail about that. How to create your fire-breathing profile. Discover what activities. Penny's going to give you step-by-step -step activities that you need to do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis to get more leads on LinkedIn. You're going to learn the lead generation marketing routine that she uses that guarantees results. Her clients pay her hundreds and thousands of dollars for her to teach this to them. You're going to get it on this webinar. You're going to create messages that generate client meetings on a regular basis. She's going to share with you some automation tools that you can automate this whole process with. And then finally, you're going to get a copy of the entire slide deck that was used on this webinar and a copy of the recording that you'll own forever and you can share with anybody that you want. And then finally, a step-by-step -step workbook, a 102-page workbook that you can follow along and take notes. And so, like I said, it's limited to the first 10 people. So the first 10 people that go to that link right there, bit.ly forward slash exposed special, and signs up for it, will get the bonus. So Penny, are you ready? Let me. Uh, okay. You ready here? Let me. Uh, yes, I am. Let me go ahead and get this transferred over to you. Hold on, just a second here. Okay, and you should have. Uh, once you click the button, you'll have control there. Okay. All right. Can you see? I can. My screen. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I always learn something. Uh, well, actually, a lot of new things whenever you go through your presentation. A lot of it has to do with mindset because they're all good reminders. And whenever you're using technology to help you for lead generation, so you know it could be a little overwhelm overwhelming. There's a lot of uh, different things that you can be doing on LinkedIn, for example. But the key is uh, is remembering what your intention is and sticking with that intention. So, um, in order to be successful on LinkedIn, you really need to streamline your activity. And the first step is you want to connect always grow your network and then also you want to schedule time to meet with your clients either on the phone or in person depending upon how you do your business every activity that you do needs to lead to those objectives and that's what that's what lead generation is all about 
So here I am. Uh, I'd like to ask all of you, just as John suggested, to go onto my uh, profile and please connect with me. And I'll look forward to meeting with you. I always enjoy growing my network and communicating and giving back to my network, which is really important. My email and telephone number are below also. But I wanted to just uh, give you a little bit of a background. I won't spend a lot of time on it because we have a lot of material to cover. And that is when I got trained in coaching, it was very important to select a niche where I could have the greatest effect in working with my clients. And I started to give training webinars and presentations on LinkedIn and I saw people getting very bleary eyed because there's so much that you can do on LinkedIn. So what I did was I focused on a system for lead generation that allows my clients to just do very special activities. Everything else is just a cherry on top. So that way you get to where you want to go a lot quicker. There are a lot of things that you can do to supplement your lead generation. We covered the basics, which I'll do a quick review of today, um, in the prior webinar that we did. And today we're going to be adding on some extra activities that when you have a little spare time, and as an entrepreneur most of us don't have that, you're going to be able to include these activities or even hire somebody to help you. I'm going to be switching back and forth between the presentation and uh, my LinkedIn account and then also a, a third party software that's going to allow for automation. I'll show you how that's done so that you can actually see it in, in action. And I'm going to show you how to do the different activities. But I also wanted to tell you that as I evolved and I started working with clients and coaching them and focused on lead generation, I got to the point now where I have a team of people where we do lead generation for our clients as well as teaching our clients how to, uh, how to do their own. And um, our leads are either in the form of a sales lead or a candidate lead, meaning that a talent acquisition department that works for human resources is out there looking for candidates. That's their lead. The activity is the same. The streamlining of your lead generation is the same. It's just that the target audience is different. And as a result, our company, Veritable Coaching, works with corporate clients as well as individuals in strategy, strategy sessions. So it's amazing when you really focus and have good intention what can happen that will allow your business to grow and evolve into something you maybe didn't start uh, with your original intention, but it's, a, it's sure a great, um, a great way to move forward in your business. So what we'll review are the four basics of LinkedIn lead generation, how to use groups, because we're building on the prior webinar that we did, because you want to use groups to find your target audience. You want to learn how to nurture relationships using the right messaging to, your, to fellow group members. And then we're going to talk about creating posts and updates that get you noticed and we'll discuss what the difference is between the two. So these bonus techniques, what we're adding in addition to the prior webinar, they're going to include how to do searches and information on the uh, automation tool, how to send messages to your first degree connections. I call it my LinkedIn 50. And it allows you to send a message to 50 of your first degree connections at a time. Now, as you grow your network and you start getting into the thousands, it is a bit time consuming. But as you grow your network and you tag them, identify what, what their position is, you, you're going to be able to develop those tags yourself. You can segment your connections and send 
50 of them at a time a particular message. And it really saves a lot of time as long as you create messages that sound personal and they're very authentic so that it isn't obvious that you're sending out a drip marketing campaign, that you're really appealing to that individual. We'll talk about publishing posts and the, what value does that bring to you as a marketer to your client, your future clients, your prospects and your clients, and also what the difference between a post is and an update and how to do them. So to follow on on what John was talking about with regard to the lead generation mindset on LinkedIn, you want to make sure no matter how appealing it is that you stick to your guns and schedule the activities on LinkedIn that are going to generate leads for you and forget about the others. Do them in your spare time. I would say that if you could devote an hour a day, preferably in the morning, to your lead generation, then you're really on a, on a good road. And I will tell you that for me, Sunday nights are great times to get onto LinkedIn because that's when a lot of people have spare time and they're responding to messages. You want to integrate your lead generation system into your daily routine and always have the mindset of growing your network because you have your first, second, and third degree network and then your group network as well. And your any update that you do, you can send it out to the thousands or even millions of people on your network. So here's the four point lead generation system. I'm not going to go into these in detail because they're in the prior webinar and I wanted to get into the uh, more detail on the, the new information I want to share with you. John mentioned having an, a fire breathing profile, which is your attraction tool. And that is so important because when I visit the profiles of my target audience, and I'm very specific about who my target audience is, then they want to invite me to connect which is really where you want to be. You want them to invite you because you have what they need. In order for that to happen, not only do you have to be good with your words and what you put in your headline and in your summary and describe what you do, how you do it, and who you do it for, you, you also want to make sure that when you take your precious time you're selecting the best clients that you have a pretty good idea that they're going to need or want your product. Sometimes that's difficult to do because you want to talk with everybody, but I would say that that is really key, is being able to target exactly who your best client is who really needs your product. Even though you can do a zillion other things, stick with what you really want to market. Your audience is going to be smaller, but they're going to be the best audience. And then all your other capabilities are going to come out as you see the needs of the people that you've converted from a prospect to a client. I see that all the time with my corporate clients. All the other capabilities that I have, in addition to what I'm promoting now, they are new services that I can offer to that same client. And I don't have to go out and find them. I already have a relationship with them. So your profile, you want to learn how to do searches. How do you do a really good search for your target audience? Again, covered in the prior webinar. You want to visit the, the targeted audience so that they see your profile. And I'm going to show you an automated automation tool for that. And then once you get interested parties, those prospects that raise their hands, those are the people that you want to nurture to a relationship. And it doesn't have to take that long. It might be one or two additional messages, which is the way it's worked for me. And if you do it correctly through your messaging and you're being authentic in your messaging, you'll find that most people you invite are going to connect to you and a large percent of, percentage of those that have connected to you once you send your second message out, 
they're going to want to have a conversation with you. So when you do searches, you're going to be able to search for individuals. You're going to be able to save your searches. And I'll show you how to do that because um, that is a really cool tool on LinkedIn. You're going to set it up so that whenever you do a search with, with keywords for your perfect clients, then what's going to happen is LinkedIn is going to send you an email on a weekly or monthly basis or daily basis, whatever you set it up for, with new people that have met the criteria that you've established in the search. So your prospect list is constantly being sent to you. And then we're also going to learn um, how to communicate, how to find group members that are your best potential clients, and then uh, the type of message that you can send to them. So I'm going to go to my LinkedIn profile. And what we're going to do first is we're going to let me go to this. Sorry, I have it in two uh, two different browsers. What we're going to do first is we're going to show you how to do a search on LinkedIn. I'm going to do an advanced search, and I highly recommend that you sign up for a premium account. You can get them go through the 30-day trial, it's free, downgrade to what I use, which is a sales basic account. Not only do you get additional filters, but also when you go in to see who's looked at your profile, which is a really important uh, lead generation tool, then you can see a lot of people. And that's one of the things you're going to do on a daily basis. You're going to visit. And then the next morning, you're going to go in and see who's viewed your profile and reach out to those that are your perfect clients, again, covered in the prior webinar. So here we are with an advanced search. And let's go with a VP of Operations. That would be a title that I'm going to use. And you would use as many keywords that, that you can to describe your perfect client. We're going to view results here. As you can see, we have 4 million plus results. Um, let's see. Uh, I can reduce that number by saying 200 to 500 employees. You can see it reduced the number here. So this is a list of all those people that are meeting the criteria that I've established in my, my filters. Now, I have other filters as well. And depending upon the type of LinkedIn account you have, you're going to have more filters than, than um, a less expensive account. Because uh, LinkedIn is a revenue generating machine. <laughs> so OK, so here's my long list. And the way to save your search, pretty, pretty simple. You hit Save Search. and this, were, this is the set of keywords I had in here. I want LinkedIn to tell me weekly how many new people have joined this particular uh, set of keywords. They meet the criteria. And I can do that never. I don't ever want to hear weekly or monthly. And then this is how you save it, just by pressing the check mark. That's as simple as it is. So if you're very specific with your target audience and you know who you're looking for, you're going to get that prospect list on a weekly basis. You could see some of the ones that I have right here. And also, depending upon your account, it depends on how many saved searches you can do. But you can always delete an, a saved search and then add a saved search. So then the next thing uh, I'm going to share with you is when you do this advanced search on LinkedIn, then um, typically you're going to want to visit each person that's on the list. But that could be very cumbersome. So visit them and decide who it is you would like to connect with. First of all, don't hit that Connect button, because it's going to send the LinkedIn standard message out. What you'd want to do, if this isn't um, enough information for you, you click on the uh, name, it'll bring you to their profile, and then connect through the profile. 
leaving a customized message for that individual. What I always do is I create a connection message template that I might make a couple of changes to, but my objective is to connect with that individual, and I just copy and paste into the connection screen, and I can go through that pretty quickly. However, as quick as you are going through this list, if you have this many people on your list, or depending upon this, the criteria you have in your searches, you can really get that number down. You can only do a certain amount of uh, visiting on a daily basis. The next morning, you're going to go into Profile, who's viewed your profile, and you're going to look at how many people or what people have viewed your profile that are in your target audience. So when you do your headline, the first 46 characters are going to show here, and so that's why you want to be sure that people know what you do when they go to look at your profile that, that uh, has visited them and they're going to decide whether or not they're going to reach out and ask you to connect. So this is one of the hardest things that I've found for myself. There are a lot of people here that I can ask to connect with or reach out to, those uh, who haven't already reached out and asked me to connect based on my, my uh, LinkedIn profile. The hardest thing for me to do is to bypass people that might look good, and I go strictly to my target audience. And my target audience right now is somebody that is an executive in talent acquisition for a company, because I have a product that I know that they can use. And those are the people that I want to connect with. So identifying your target audience and really making sure that every activity that you have is targeted in your presentation and who you connect with and reach out to is within your target audience. You'll see a lot more success than trying to cover the world. <laughs> okay, So these are the people that have visited me now. In order to automate the process of visiting the profiles from an advanced search, then you want to sign up for this service it's called SearchQuant. And you go to SearchQuant, S-E-A-R-C-H, Quant, Q-U-A-N-T, dot net. The cost is, you, have, you, you need to have a premium account on LinkedIn to make it effective. It's $200 month to month. You don't have to sign up for an annual license. Um, so it's well worth it because what you can do is you can visit up to a thousand profiles on a daily basis without having to be involved in the activity. So here's an example. Um, and it's, it's really great because then you're going to go into who's viewed your profile and you are going to see a ton of people who, have, who are going to look at you that are within your target audience because it's based on your search. And then they're looking at you because you visited them. Now you get to decide who do you want to reach out to. Some of them, based on your profile, are going to already want to connect with you. But for those that just looked and moved on, it's time for you to go out and reach out to them. So go to searchquant.net, and the way it works is this. You do an advanced search on LinkedIn. Okay, and let me do, I'm going to go back to the prior screen, VP operations. You copy this link right up here, the URL. You go to Search Quant, and you add a campaign. Let's call it VP Operations. Oops. Now, maybe I'm only going to do this in Portland, Oregon, so I would label it that way. 
and select myself as the user because you can sign up uh, for multiple people in your company using SearchQuant at the URL right here and you create a campaign. It's that simple. Now one of the reasons why this is so great, you see this little yellow button here? I've already visited 800 people in a 24-hour period in the background done by SearchQuant. I don't have to touch it. So what I do on Sunday night is I think about the target audience I want to go to. I do my advanced searches. I get my list of names. I create the campaign just as I've shown you right here. And then every day this system, this SearchQuant system, will visit 800 profiles. Now I set the threshold at 800. You can go a little bit higher, but we don't want to um, uh, have LinkedIn say uh, you're, you're visiting too many people. So uh, LinkedIn has all these algorithms that they look at, and that is a very safe number. So 800 people a day. Try doing that yourself. <laughs> you can't do that. And what's great about it is this little button is green. It's running in the background. I turn my computer on. It's going. I don't have to to be concerned about it. I can continue any other work on my computer. Every morning I go in to look at who's viewed my profile. And it's amazing how many people that come to my account and invite me to connect with them. Now, I don't connect with everybody. I only connect with people in my target audience. The only category that I have difficulty saying no to is maybe a student. <laughs> somebody who's in, in education who is just starting to get their name out there and networking on LinkedIn. So, but I really, I am pretty stringent about who I want to connect with because my messaging, everything I do is focused on my messaging to my target audience. Some of the other benefits of SearchQuant that I just want to point out, you can make changes to your queries. You can um, revisit. So I have clients, for example, if they're hiring candidates in a certain city, I can revisit that city and the profiles within that query every month, every two months, whatever, whatever is going to work. You, know, you don't want to overdo it, but um, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You don't have to redo that search. It's already done for you. When I showed you the saved search, Anytime I get a saved search notification on LinkedIn, from LinkedIn on my email, then I go to the URL of all those new individuals. I plug in a, a new campaign, and SearchQuant takes care of it. It's well worth it. It just speeds up finding your target clients, uh, you know, a hundredfold because not only you are you not spending your time doing something that could be automated, but just think how many can you do in three hours? It's a lost opportunity. You could be out there meeting with people. So it's a really great tool. The other that I wanted to point out is you can view all the profiles that were in a campaign. Let me see. I'm going to go to a finished campaign that I did. And then what I'm going to do, it says, uh, OK, here's a campaign. So I'm going to go to this campaign and view all the visited profiles. And as you can see, everybody that you saw on the LinkedIn list is shown right here, their title, their name. So you have a different view of each one, and you can also, uh, at the far right where it says go to, you can go to that individual's profile from within SearchQuant if you want to. But the way I like to use this list is it can be exported to Excel. And those people that connect with you, um, you're going to get their email. You can now use this list as a prospecting list also. You want to make sure you have a connection with them and their email 
uh, before you, you move to a drip campaign, say, on, on email because you want to uh, make sure that you know, you're not in the spamming category. <laughs> but it's, it's really a great tool to develop your own list. So that is SearchQuant. SearchQuant.net, I recommend that you go sign up for it. Chris uh, Zaharias is a, a great trainer for that. You'll get instructions on how to use SearchQuant, and she's also available to help with those uh, extra little questions. But you can see it is so easy to use, and how much easier can it, can it be to look at the dot right up here and see whether it's green, yellow, or red. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint just to keep me on track here. And how do you convert those people that are now your connection after you've searched for them? So we've already talked about how to search for them, making sure that you're focused on your best targets. But what you want to do now is you want to engage. And I put engage through on authenticity. How many of us are constantly getting emails? And uh, now a lot of people, quite frankly, are using LinkedIn for promotions. And LinkedIn is changing a lot of their algorithms so that their philosophy of communicating with people that are within your network because you want to engage and help them versus promote yourself. They're changing their algorithms to make it a little bit more tough to uh, just do blast emails uh, through LinkedIn. So. Being authentic is really key because that is what's going to make people want to connect with you. You really have a solution, and you're not just uh, sending messages out and seeing what, what's going to stick. So no sales pitches. Sometimes after the connection, it takes two messages, sometimes even three messages, to get them to the point of wanting to be a client. It depends on how good you are at your written communication skills with the intention of getting to know that individual and seeing if there is a need for what you have and if you can help them. And uh, in the prior webinar, I gave some examples of some messages that were created as templates. I put all my template messages on a Word document so that what I can do is cut and pay, or copy and paste. However, if it's a really targeted client, I do recommend that you look at their profile and pull something out of that profile that is going to resonate with them. One of the best tools to use for that is to look at some of the things that their recommendation letters they've received, what, what those individuals are saying about them. For example, I've been working with John Pyron for one year, and it's amazing how customer service oriented he's always available to me. You can make a slight comment about that in your letter, and that tells your prospect that you're taking that extra care, and you're really trying to learn about them rather than just promote your product. So there is a function on LinkedIn that I mentioned earlier called the LinkedIn 50. I'm going to go to LinkedIn and show you how to use that function. OK, so the way you use that function where you can communicate with 50 of your current first degree connections. You go up here on LinkedIn to connections. And my recommendation is when you connect with somebody, tag them. 
that's an identifier. So, for example, here is an individual. He's marketing social media. Here's somebody uh, that is a talent acquisition. And I put a tag in there, active. And that tells me I sent him a letter. That's a quickie. Just tell, tells me that I sent him a letter of engagement. So what you can do up here is um, always, it always goes uh, by default to recent conversation. I go to new. And then here, filter by all contacts. The difference between a contact and a connection is some of us import all of the people that we know from, say, our iPhone contact list. And we're not necessarily connected to those individuals, but they're listed here. And the blue here means they're a connection. The uh, gray means they're a contact when you see a gray LinkedIn symbol here. So filter by, I do connections only. Okay. Then, so those are all my first degree connections. Then if I want to send a message out specifically to talent acquisition VPs, then I can sort by tag. You can also sort by location. So I have a, if I have a client that's going to Portland for a campaign, it would be easy for me to just go to the location. And you'll see what it does is I'm going to do by tag. Here are a list of all my tags. I've kind of... Uh, some of them are, are older from prior campaigns, so TA. And now it's going to list all of my talent acquisition connections. You can also, within your connections, do a search using keywords and, and your list of those connections that have those keywords in here are going to show up. So here we've got. Um, all my connections filtered by tag. And let's see. What, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to either select all or select individuals. So let me do this gentleman and Ashley. But you can, you can select up to 50. Now, if you have 1,000 people in this one category, then the way to get around that is you can sort by uh, the uh, alphabetically, first name or last name. Um, when you have lots of connections, and depending upon how you do this, you might need somebody to help you with it because it, it, is, it can get time consuming the more connections you have. So now that I've selected, I can um, add a message here that might say active here or um, a word that might describe the fact that I just sent a particular message out. But let's go to message and, whoops, that one, let me do a couple more. Go to message and if that individual was a contact and not a connection, LinkedIn will let you know. So I just say OK, and there's probably only going to be, yeah, there's only three here. But I can do up to 50. Enter a subject. Um, it might be um, update on uh, talent acquisition at um, uh, new conference. So maybe it's an article or something that I want to share with them. I'm going to show you in a minute what a good type of message would be. When you type your message, it should sound like you're talking to one individual. It's not going to have their name on it, but it sounds like you're talking to one individual. and You want to give them some information that would be helpful to them because that's very important in networking on LinkedIn, is to share information with your connections and be top of mind. They know what your expertise is, and they know who to call when they're in need. <laughs> so you type your message here, and I'll show you that on the PowerPoint. And then you can also attach a file. So say you created a document or a slide, or a slide presentation, you can attach that. 
but before you hit this button, this is really important, uncheck this box. And it, I'll tell you what, you realize it right after you hit send message. So I'm warning you now, if you want it to sound like it's not spam and not going to a bunch of individuals, or you don't want others to, uh, people to see who you've sent your message to, then you must uncheck this box and then send your message, okay? So I wanted to make sure I brought that to your attention because it's very important. Let me go back to the PowerPoint so you can see what this message looks like. As you can see, what I've done is I've be I began the message by saying how important it is that we keep in touch on LinkedIn. And what I said here, I actually spend more time here than on my website. So maybe sharing something a bit personal. So I reiterate where my focus is. I'm sharing some information about myself because I want to keep in touch with them. And maybe at, at this point, you want to invite them to a free webinar. I a lot of times do this when I'm presenting a webinar and I want to invite individuals from a particular city or according to a tag, I'm offering a free webinar to my network. Okay, or maybe like John was talking about referrals, maybe you can help out a referral partner. You can partner together and offer a free uh, webinar link from your partner. That is really great reciprocity. Or you can share an article. Now, I say an article about LinkedIn because that's my area of expertise, but whatever your area of expertise is. And I invite them to keep in touch with me. It's amazing. It's amazing how this constant contact really helps out. Now, I'm going to just mention again that this type of activity is outside of the basics which we shared in the prior webinar and which I reviewed earlier. Let me go back to, so you've got your message here, okay? And uh, that is uh, one way that you can connect in a, a very quick format to your current connection. Okay, then another area is to connect with group members. Now, a lot of times people get fearful of involving themselves in groups because it can be a lot of work, and it's true. And LinkedIn allows you to join up to 50 groups. Well, forget having any life at all if you feel like you can engage with 50 groups. But, but you can engage with a couple of groups that contain your target audience by participating in the discussion. And through your discussion, you're going to be sharing your expertise. So people are going to start communicating with you and commenting on your discussion. But there's another way to use LinkedIn groups. And that is, uh, a lot of people don't know this, when you message other group members, you do not have to be connected to them. So you may or may not know, when you reach out to an individual and you, in order to communicate with them, unless you have in-mail, which allows you to communicate without a first degree connection, uh, in order to communicate with them one-on-one, -on -one, you need to be connected to them on a first degree. But when you're part of a group that contains your target audience, you have the ability to communicate with the group members and not be limited to the size of connection message, which is 300 characters. Now you have 2,000 characters and spaces that you can use to communicate with them. But remember, you want to stay authentic, and you go in with the intention of wanting to engage with them because they are your perfect client who you have a solution for that may or may not be applicable for them. But hey, let's have a conversation and see if this is something you might be interested in. 
that's the approach that I take. It's not threatening. And then I always view my network as a resource for me and me as a resource for them. And I think that's a really good attitude because um, people don't want to be sold to online. They want to solve their problems. They want to keep in touch with their network. And this is your opportunity. But here are some ideas. You can comment on their profile, and you can close for, for an invitation. So I'll show you how to do a group, uh, how, how to message to a group member in a moment. But I want to show you what a message would look like. The very first message that you want to send to a fellow group member is with the intention of connecting with them. And so you don't want to sell. You don't necessarily want to talk about your expertise. Your goal is to connect and add them to your network. All the other stuff comes later. So you talk about what you have in common for both members of this group. You name the group. Uh, you might say, I saw a comment you just placed. Or you might want to make a comment about their profile. Okay. Uh, so if it's a mortgage banking professional, I'm interested in networking with um, mortgage banking leaders or real estate leaders or sales leaders. And I'd appreciate your contact information and inv invitation to connect with you. Now, you could also say, um, I'd like to connect with you, but what this does, A, it's asking them for their contact information, their telephone number, and their email address. So that shows a different level of interest to the people you're reaching out to. And I think it's really important, because those people that want to provide that are going to be more open to your communication with them. Secondly, uh, LinkedIn does uh, look at our activity. And so if you're constantly sending out connection requests, then you have a limit as to how many you can do. I mean, there are people that sit in front of the TV and send out, they, they just go down a list and send out connection requests to, um, to people that they want to have in their network. So that's not in LinkedIn's best practices. That's why it's better to have somebody invite you rather than you using up all your connection requests out there. Uh, the third reason is when you have somebody's email address and you do send a connection request to them, because maybe they haven't responded, but you really know that that's a really good client and you want to connect with them. It looks better for you when, when you go to connect with them in the connection box to, instead of choosing colleague or any of the others, friend, to choose other and then provide the email address and you're in. Okay. I always use colleague if I don't have an email address because that I rarely get bounced from that. But uh, having an email address is really the best. And it's because more voluntary action, a call to action in your uh, target audience. So now let's go to LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you, let's see, go here. Now, I also, as an aside, Something to think about. It's a lot of hard work, but you can start your own group. I started a group a long time ago and really never worked it because I got involved in, in what I'm doing now, working with corporations. But when you start your own group, one of the benefits is as you build your client base, your perfect clients, and you get them to join your group, the benefit there is that you control the discussions and the things that are shared within your group. So it's very, very effective in building a community. It's just, it is a lot of work. So if you have somebody who can help you manage it, go for it. <laughs> but it's a, um, it, it's a great tool also to develop your own community. 
So this is my group, and I wanted to show you that when somebody starts a discussion, so say you came into my group, you can start a discussion here, and then you're establishing your credibility just by engaging in that group. A discussion is one thing, then there are promotions and jobs. I would recommend that when you start a discussion, if it's really a promotion, that you make sure you hit on the promotions tab because every group has rules and members in there don't like when they're constantly seeing somebody in there promoting themselves and not engaging in the conversation. So make sure you write your, um, your discussion under the promotions tab in that case or job, whatever, whatever it is. So you enter your discussion, you can put a link in there if you're having uh, promoting a webinar as an example and you're getting to all the group members. Now, some groups have hundreds of thousands of uh, members in them. So you want to make sure that you join 50 groups and they're pertinent to your target audience that you're looking for. OK, so now um, let's say you want to go to the members of this group. So you go under Search, and here's a list of well, these are all my, my um, updates. Now you have the selection of going to members. Mine is a very small group, but it's, it's uh, manageable for me to show you how to do this because it's no different than any other group that you belong to. Now you have your members, and within this search box, you might use keywords to get only members that are pertinent to your target audience or in a geographic area. So LinkedIn will look within all of those people on the list and pull up those individuals that match your keywords. My keywords in a group where I'm in a mortgage banking group, as an example, I've worked with a lot of mortgage banking organizations, might be uh, looking for, uh, I might put loan officers, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. That's what I'm looking for. And then only those individuals that belong to the group, that have those keywords and their profiles are going to show up on my list. Okay? So with that, now I can, let's say I have uh, Jana as an example. I have this whole list. I can click on Jana, and I'm not connected to her, uh, perhaps under first degree, because when you're doing this with groups that have a lot of members, you're not going to be connected to everybody. Maybe um, you're connected under group. You might be second degree, third degree, in some cases first degree, but you can still leave a message. Wow, this screen looks really familiar, except that little checkbox down here. So there you go. You can message individual group members without having to be connected to them. When you message them, I do recommend that you uh, ask them to connect to you so that you know that's behind you. Ask them for their email and their contact information. And again, you're going to be writing that message with authenticity and uh, tell them that you've looked at their profile, what they do, and this is what you what you do, and maybe there's an application you can be resources for each other. Okay, no sales talk. That will give you the greatest success in somebody wanting to connect with you. There's a lot of information here, a lot of activity. And I do encourage you to pick and choose those activities that are going to produce the best results for you. This, in my book, is extra. Okay, So uh, this is extra behind the routine of optimizing your profile, doing your searches, visiting, and then nurturing. Now, I will say to you that messages that you create are really very, very important. And that's something that I do a lot for my clients. Um, it's using the right words, asking for the right call to action, making the connection 
and the relationship mutually beneficial. But in order to do that with authenticity, that really needs to be your intention going in. And that really, I think, uh, reiterates the message that John was sharing earlier on and why it was so important in the beginning of the webinar. Because it really is a relationship. And I have uh, uh, the work that I do with my clients is extremely collaborative. And it's very important that I have good relationships with customers. And um, there are some things they need to do and things that I need to do, but it's all toward the same objective. And I think going in with that attitude is very important. If you find yourself working with somebody that is not going to be collaborative or there's something that just isn't working, it's best to, to really not pursue it for both parties. And I've had situations like that also, the expectations um, are different and getting those ex expectations established right at the beginning are very uh, key to a good long-term working relationship. And that's what's going to allow you to use all your other skill sets and introduce them as you begin your work with your clients. So the next area that I want to pursue is Posts and updates. I, I, uh, before we get into this, I just I hope that the group messaging has given you a whole new avenue of pursuing potential clients within your targeted groups. Um, one caveat I have in there is LinkedIn, Big Brother is always watching, and. So you want, one of the other reasons for authenticity is you want the recipient to know that uh, your reaching out to them is very authentic. And um, uh, LinkedIn is pretty strict about that because there are a lot of people out there who are spamming through LinkedIn groups because they've discovered this ability. And, um, Quite frankly, there are ways that it can be automated, but it uh, isn't necessarily used properly. Uh, a lot of what uh, I do in my company, we do automate a lot of these functions, not only with SearchQuant, but we have uh, ways to automate messages to targeted clients within LinkedIn groups. However, we always stay within LinkedIn's best practices and um, I have some very, very special people on my team that understand how to communicate to group members. Um, it is a good idea, once somebody has given you their email or their phone, start communicating with them through email um, and not necessarily through LinkedIn. It brings the relationship to a different level. So as a practice, that might be something to keep in the back of your mind. Now, the next category will be posts and updates. And I say how to become a refrigerator magnet. And the analogy here is, you know when you're going to sell a house and you've been in your house for 10 years and all along you're getting calendars or refrigerator magnets or whatever from different realtors, some you keep, some you throw away, and those special Maybe the last one you got or the last two you got, you put them on your refrigerator. So all of a sudden you decide you're going to sell your house and you have no idea who to call. Well, you call, you go to your refrigerator and you look at the magnet. Who has been the person, or your calendar, who has been the person that has been really keeping in touch on a regular basis, whose name comes to mind when you have a need, and that's what they do. So. Uh, that's exactly what you're doing through a post and an update. You're keeping yourself top of mind. I know it is sometimes annoying when you see somebody posting all the time or updating all the time, um, or you see LinkedIn um, saying it's so-and-so's birthday or another person changed their job. What's the big deal to go on and just communicate back with that individual? Congratulations to you. Just to keep in touch. It takes a moment 
to do that. And that's really what it's designed for, staying top of mind. So I'm going to go back to LinkedIn. And I am going to show you how to do a post and how to do a an update. Okay. All of this is pretty simple, but um, there are some key points to note in order to make it effective. So under share and update. You just type in what you want. Now, typically, an update is shorter. It's going to have a link in there. And you have the option to send it to the public, which is the first, second, third degree, and group connections you have. You can share it with just your connections, meaning your first degree connections. Or you can share it with everybody and Twitter, if you have a Twitter account. So. Um, when you do share with Twitter, you want to make sure the first 140 characters are pretty powerful to get them to, um, to pursue that, that message that you're sending out. The difference between uh, messaging somebody like we did on the LinkedIn 50 versus an update is some people check their updates. Some people have their updates connected to their email so that they're getting an update all the time. And then some people don't check their updates. So your message is going unheard. And you have no real control over that. I always go in and check my updates right here. And we'll communicate with somebody or comment on their post because they're my connections and I care about my connections. <laughs> but I don't spend a lot of time doing it. It's, if you check it on a daily basis, you can stay up with things. But those things that catch my eye, I definitely comment on. And worse comes to worse, um, you know, there might be somebody in your company or an assistant that might help you do that, uh, commenting or keeping up on posts. So you can put links in here if you like, um, link to a presentation that you're doing, and then all you do is you click share. But it's a quick. Uh, article, quick comment, maybe if you're, I'm going to pick on real estate again. If you saw a really cool article on real estate and you want to send it out to uh, all of your connections because you thought it was funny and it related to uh, something that just occurred to you, you can send a quick update about it and make a, a short comment about it. But they're hearing from you. I'm going to go to my profile and show you the difference between a post and an update. A post is something that does create, it does require some writing talent if it's going to be effective. By the way, you always go into a LinkedIn edit mode. So in order to view it as the way the public is going to see you, you click on this button right here. Now. This shows my posts, and that's where your posts are going to reside also. You can attach things to your summary if you wanted to, art, um, usually articles or different programs. I have my uh, Turbo Recruit program, which is the uh, recruiting that we do on LinkedIn. And I also have a way for people to connect uh, to getting my newsletter. But a post is different. A post requires uh, creativity, uh, t storytelling, something that absolutely demonstrates your expertise. And it resides right here under your headline. You can also put it down lower, but I always recommend uh, putting it right up here. And what's great about a post is when you write a post, it can be repurposed. So uh, I do have an, uh, an administrative assistant that assists me because it can get um, pretty cumbersome. You write the post. Uh, well, I write the post. I post it on LinkedIn. She puts it in my newsletter. And she puts it in um, an account I have called uh, Buffer. 
And Buffer is kind of like Hootsuite, where it shares it among my social networks. I also put it on my website. So you write one post, and it can be repurposed. So um, I'm going to try to uh, finish this up in 10 minutes, but very quickly, uh, how to create a post is you go to your home. You go to publish a post. Some people kind of use this space like you would an update. It's short and sweet. And some companies, they have their marketing department write a post, and then everybody shares the same thing. I like to write a post about something unique on LinkedIn and um, or about LinkedIn, tech, technical, and that way it gives people instructions on how to use it and it demonstrates my, my expertise. But you bring a picture that, that actually communicates even more about what you want to say. You can add links. You can put photos within the post. You can also uh, embed a video if you'd like to. And you just start writing. You can put up a bunch of drafts. And when you're ready, just put that post out there. How often do you do this? An update you do, I would say, once. Um, I wouldn't do more than two a week. Uh, post, it, it's nice to have one a week. If you can do that, or two a month is fine just as long as you're doing it. And it's kind of fun because it gives you the opportunity to share your expertise with your connections. And it does stay on your profile. So, And it's being repurposed. So it's really a great, great tool to tell people what you're really, really good at. So there's one more um, area that I, it's, a, it's a really cool tool that you could use within LinkedIn. Uh, it's called Bookmarklet. This is the link that you would go to. And I'll show you how it's used. Um, but I do want to make this point here. Post show your authority on a particular topic of your area of expertise. And that's the real benefit of it. You're constantly reminding your audience of what you do really well. So when they have the need, they'll know who to call. That's your refrigerator magnet. <laughs> OK. So here is the, uh, the bookmark, like bookmarklet I wanted to show you. Um, and that is um, right here, share on LinkedIn. When you go to that site that I shared with you on the last slide, LinkedIn.com slash bookmarklet. You're going to be asked to drag an icon up to your toolbar on your browser. Oh, look, SearchQuant is working because uh, 24 hours has passed. So it's going through that um, through my uh, new campaign. Anyway, um, uh, so there's share on LinkedIn. And what the benefit here is, let me show you. I'm going to open up another tab. I'm going to go to CNN.com. I see an article on CNN. Whoops. Try to look for some good news, if that's even possible. Um, OK, so you find an article that uh, would be pertinent to your network or your groups, whatever it might be. So say we wanted to, uh, you belong to a whitewater rafting group, as an example. Um, or uh, something that is an activity group. You're on this web page. You go to Share on LinkedIn. And you'll see the, a LinkedIn box comes up. Makes it very, very simple. You don't have to copy the link and look for the groups. Makes it really simple to share an update. You type in your update. All these look familiar to you, the public, first degree, or public and Twitter. My Twitter box is checked right here. So this is an update. You can post to groups. So if you click here, you start typing in the name of a group. And uh, LinkedIn will autofill for you. You can have a discussion, provide additional details. 
and then you can also send it to individuals. So if you're working with two or three clients and you want to share that update with those individuals or, or the article with them, you just click here and now you can start typing in their name and it goes directly to them. It is really a cool tool. A lot of people don't even know about it and it speeds up the process of sharing. Okay, so I hope I have shared with you the highlights of some of the additional functions that LinkedIn offers you to stay in touch with your network. And I reiterate, to stay in touch with your targeted network and make sure that you're very focused on your area of expertise so that they're going to think about you when it comes to doing what you do best. John? Hey, great job. Great job. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I mean, that's a, that's a ton of information, so I really, really appreciate that. All right, let me um, get this back here. Hold on just a second. Okay. And let me make sure that I got the right screen. There we go. Perfect. Awesome yeah. job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Well, there's so much information that we have access to on LinkedIn uh, uh, that um, using those tools that are going to work best for our clients is important, but you got to know what the tools are. Yeah, yeah. And there's so much more to it. I mean, it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's one of those things where you've got to do as much as you can on your own and then ultimately you have to work with an expert that can help you do even better. One of the things I've learned a long time ago is the best, the least expensive experience is somebody else's and the most expensive experience is my own. <laughs> so, so true. <laughs> so, you know, when I uh, hired my, uh, my, the mentor I'm working with right now, I had gone at the business that I'm building right now for over a year and a half, and I got it to a point where I had taken it, which is, you know, building a six-figure business, I've done a lot of that, so getting it into the six figures was not a challenge. It's getting it into the seven figures is where I really hired him and one of his expertise. And so I learned that, you know, I can get there, but I would rather get there quickly and with a lot less pain. So. Anyways, that's uh, my two cents. So let me hop back into it real quick. We're going to close this out. We're uh, coming uh, at the top of the hour. And good stuff, good stuff. So let's get um, – I want to share this one slide with you. Kenneth Blanchard, who wrote The One Minute Manager and lots of other really cool books, said, behind every success is effort, behind every pa effort is passion. And behind every passion is someone with the courage to try. And then he goes on to say there's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in something, you do it only when it's convenient. And when you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. So you could take everything that Penny's talked about today. You could take everything I've talked about today, and you can put it on a shelf. Or you can take action. And one of the things that holds most people back when it comes to taking action is this word right here, and that is procrastination. How many of us have stuff that we know we're supposed to be doing, but yet we continue to put it off next week, tomorrow, next month, someday? And as the photo states, what about doing it right now, one of the things I've learned is some of the best lessons in life come from nature. And so let me tell you about the buffalo and the cow. 
And the difference between these two animals, see in the state of Colorado, it's one of the few landscapes where there are both buffalo and cows. And what's interesting is how these two animals respond to a storm. Because see in the state of Colorado, they're best known for the Rocky Mountains. And as you go towards the east, it goes down into the foothills and off to the great Kansas plains. And one of the things that happens in the state of Colorado is when a storm comes in, it usually starts out from the west, comes in over the Rocky Mountains and goes out towards the east. And what's interesting is how these two animals respond to a storm. The cow, when it sees the storm, takes a look at the storm and it says, oh crap, um, here comes a storm. And then it turns around in the opposite direction of the storm and it runs as hard and as fast as it can in the opposite direction of the storm. And I don't know if you've ever realized this or not, but cows don't run very fast. So the storm catches up to them and instead of stopping, they end up trying to run even faster and they actually run with the storm and thereby maximizing its impact, maximizing its pain, maximizing the longevity of their circumstance. Isn't that stupid? Yet, how many of us have things that we know we're supposed to be doing and yet we don't do it? How many of you as Penny was sharing today, maybe it was something I shared with you today, and you're like, yeah, I know I should be doing that, and yet you're not going to take action. And what you have to do is you have to take the stance of a buffalo because, see, when a buffalo sees the exact same storm, what the buffalo does is totally different than what the cow does. And what the buffalo does is his buffalo looks and sees the storm and says, oh, crap, it's a, it's a storm. Darn. Okay, well, I guess, all right, fine. It bears its head down, lowers its head, and it charges as hard and as fast as it can directly into that storm. Now, why is that? So it can get through the pain of being in the storm. And that's how the most successful people that we all know, we look at other people and we go, okay, man, if I could just be like them. And in reality, what you're going to find, the most successful people that you know, what they do is they deal with procrastination in a different way. They deal with things they don't want to do in a different way. Instead of avoiding them and putting them off to next week and next day and next year and someday I'll get to it. They say, you know what, it's got to get done. I'm going to buckle down and get it done and get the pain over quick. And so the moral of the story is this. Problems that are procrastinated on are only amplified. The key is to be the buffalo. And one of the things that you can do to take action on what we're talking about today is two things. Number one is something for free. It doesn't cost you a dime to do this. You can go to Facebook and type in the 10X Mastermind Group. It is a Facebook group. You can join that group for free. And every single week, I lead a national call for the Small Business Administration and for this group where I share valuable content every single week and you can take everything I'm talking about each week, one golden nugget and take action on it. Now, here's the key takeaway. Whether you join this group or you join somebody else's group, it doesn't really matter. The, here's the key. Find somebody that you can plug into, a podcast you can listen to, a video channel that you can subscribe to on YouTube, Consume at least one or two new ideas every single week and don't procrastinate on it and take action. 
The second thing you can do is what I shared with you earlier. You can go to bit.ly forward slash exposed special, all one word, and you can sign up for Secrets Revealed, Surefire Ways to Find Your Perfect Client. You think you got a lot from Penny Pearl on today's webinar. Wait till you go to this and see this. I mean, there's so much how-to content on there. And again, I want to remind you, everything that's included, you're going to get the actual ebook and the step-by-step -step webinar and the PowerPoint deck and all the systems that you need to make it happen. The choice is yours. And I want to remind you that the first 10 people that sign up for this are going to get a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with myself or Penny Pearl. And for, you know, a half hour or so, we're going to put our brains on your business and we're going to give you the best ideas we have on what you can do with your LinkedIn profile to make it better. I don't know about you, Penny, but I charge 500 bucks for an hour and a half long strategy session. And to get a half hour with me, it probably cost you a couple of hundred bucks. And so the other thing is I want to point out is we have put a guarantee on this webinar. So if you buy it and you take action on it and you implement everything that we're talking about in there and you don't see an improvement in your connection request and you don't see an improvement in if you're not completely satisfied, 100 percent satisfied, we'll give you your money back. It's as simple as that. So, again, not 99 bucks, 49 bucks. And how you go there and get it? is you go to this link right here, bit.ly forward slash exposed special. My advice would be to go there, and if 49 bucks is standing in your way, I mean, really, I would recommend you quit whatever it is you're trying to build and go back and get a job, okay? This is a great investment of 49 bucks. There's no risk to you. Make it happen. Obviously, we can sell it for 249 bucks, but we want to get this out into the hands of thousands of people, not just the people that you know are have already arrived. Okay, this is going to help you build your business. So let me close with this thought: whether you sign up for this today or not, you're going to pay either way. Cost today 49 bucks. There's also a cost for not signing up, and that is. You can continue to have the LinkedIn profile that you have and continue to not get the results that you could be getting. And so if you need to contact myself in any way, you can go to johnpyron.com. And below the video there, you can click on schedule and you can get an appointment with me. And I will gladly share with you and spend 15 minutes with you to get to know you better. See if there's any ideas or strategies I can share with you that will help you out. You can send me an email at jpyron at johnpyron.com or my cell number 916-765-2596. So, Penny, it was uh, it was great having doing this today. I had a lot of fun. Did you have a lot of fun? I did too. Bad. And and I think that uh, we gave a lot of information out that should uh, get. Uh, potential um, success within LinkedIn and lead generation and the offer for us to be there, it makes it even better. Yeah, it's a, it's a great deal. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who, who takes advantage of this. So I'm looking forward to working with, uh, with uh, you more and with all the people that respond to this. This is going to be a great message. I, I tell you what, man, nobody – Doing this type of work is giving this offer. I can guarantee that. So I, I love being able to dominate in this space. So this is awesome. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot. For, thanks for having me join in. You bet. You bet. I'll talk to you later. Have a great one. Have a, have, Bye. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.